The efficacy of lithium for treating mania was discovered in 1949, making it the first medication specifically developed to treat bipolar disorder. Lithium remains a mainstay of treatment for bipolar disorder, especially for acute mania and maintenance treatment. In addition, lithium appears to reduce the risk of suicide in patients with bipolar disorder and may possibly have other benefits such as reducing the risk of developing neurocognitive disorder, a general term that describes decreased mental function due to a medical disease other than a psychiatric illness. It is often used synonymously but incorrectly with dementia. Lithium is the third element of the periodic table and shares certain properties with other monovalent cations such as potassium and sodium as well as the divalent cations, calcium and magnesium. Bipolar disorder is a mood disorder that is characterized by episodes of mania, hypomania and major depression. The subtypes of bipolar disorder include bipolar 1 and bipolar 2. Patients with bipolar 1 disorder experience manic episodes and nearly always experience major depressive and hypomanic episodes. Bipolar 2 disorder is marked by at least one hypomanic episode, at least one major depressive episode, and the absence of manic episodes. Lithium's mechanism of action in treating mania is unknown, however, reviews suggest that the overall effect of lithium is such that it stimulates inhibitory neurotransmission and inhibits excitatory transmission. As an example, multiple studies suggest that some neurons in patients with bipolar disorder may be hyperexcitable, more easily stimulated, and that lithium may reduce this hyperexcitability in patients who respond to the drug. The three primary considerations in choosing a medication are clinical efficacy, tolerability, and safety. These factors involve issues such as past response to medications, comorbid medical illnesses, concurrent medications, and specific symptoms. Another consideration is cost. Lithium is one of the many medications that can be selected to treat acute mania, hypomania, and bipolar and unipolar depression, and is also a potential choice for maintenance treatment of bipolar disorder. Lithium is generally avoided in patients with significant renal diseases, and often not used during the first trimester of pregnancy. In addition, lithium can significantly affect thyroid function. Long-term treatment with lithium is associated with a reduced risk of suicide attempts and suicide deaths. For patients with severe mania, the combination of lithium plus an antipsychotic is often useful. There are several basic points to discuss with patients before prescribing lithium, including potential side effects, the need to take the medication as prescribed rather than as needed, and to expect that response and remission may not occur until a few days to weeks have elapsed after a therapeutic dose has been achieved. The starting dose of lithium is usually 300 milligrams, two or three times daily, the total daily dose is then increased by 3 to 600 mg every 1 to 5 days based upon response tolerability and body mass index. The goal is to reach a therapeutic serum level which generally occurs with a dose of 900 to 1800 mg per day. Dose increases generally occur more frequently at the beginning of treatment and less often as clinicians approach the target dose. Lithium can be dosed either once daily or in a divided dose regimen. Clinicians should start with a twice daily or three times daily dosing schedule to minimize side effects, especially nausea, early in the treatment and consolidate the dose schedule to once daily after a number of weeks or months of treatment. Some patients may have to continue taking lithium in two or four divided doses to minimize peak level side effects. However, adherence generally decreases as the frequency of dosing increases. The target serum level for acute phase management and maintenance treatment is between 0.8 and 1.2 milli equivalent per liter or millimole per liter, and levels should usually not exceed 1.2.
patients who cannot tolerate a level of 0 0.8 may respond to a level of 0 0.6 milli equivalent per litre or millimole per litre. Lithium levels should be drawn approximately 12 hours after the last dose and it is usually drawn in the morning and before the first dose of the day. Serum lithium levels are closely related to renal function, salt balance and water balance. Clinicians can expect lithium concentrations to change as follows. Dehydration may occur with gastrointestinal viral infections or high fever and this may cause higher lithium levels. Increasing sodium intake cause increased sodium and lithium excretion and lower lithium levels. Excessive lithium levels can lead to toxicity with severe side effects and multi-system dysfunction that can be fatal if not recognized. Lithium toxicity is a clinical diagnosis that is confirmed by serum lithium levels. Relatively mild toxicity usually does not occur until serum lithium reaches a level of 1.5 milli equivalent per litre or millimole per litre. Levels equal to or greater than 2.5 constitute a medical emergency even in patients who appear relatively asymptomatic. The likelihood of lithium intoxication is increased when lithium excretion is impaired. This most commonly occurs with underlying renal insufficiency, effective volume depletion, and in elderly patients because of low glomerular filtration rate. Medications that change renal function, salt balance or water balance can alter lithium excretion and serum lithium concentrations. Lithium levels must be closely monitored in patients taking these medications. These drug interactions are as follows. Those interactions which can increase lithium levels include thiazide diuretics, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs except aspirin, angiotensin, converting enzyme inhibitors, and antibiotic tetracyclines and metronidazole. Uh, those interactions which can decrease lithium levels include potassium, sparing diuretics, and theophylline. Uh, interactions that may increase or decrease lithium level includes loop diuretics and calcium channel blockers. Before prescribing lithium and during ongoing treatment, laboratory tests need to be obtained because lithium can adversely affect several organ systems. Prior to beginning lithium, the following tests should be obtained. Urinalysis, blood urea, nitrogen, creatinine, thyroid function studies, and calcium. Pregnancy test for women of childbearing potential. Electrocardiogram for patients with risk factors for coronary heart disease, including diabetes hypertension, dyslipidemia, and cigarette smoking. Lithium levels should be checked five to seven days after the dose is changed. In addition, a lithium level should be checked if a dose increases under consideration and a level has not been measured for at least two weeks. Patients on steady doses should have their levels checked every six to 12 months. In addition to checking lithium levels during ongoing treatment, renal, thyroid, and parathyroid function should be monitored. General strategies for managing adverse effects of lithium include watchful waiting, tolerance to some side effects such as nausea and tremor can eventually occur but is unlikely with other adverse effects such as weight gain, changing the time of administration, lowering the dose. This strategy can be useful but at the same time Keep in mind that reducing the dose risks diminishing efficacy. Changing to a different lithium formulation, uh, immediate release or slow release. Dividing the daily dose to take smaller amounts more often to decrease peak serum levels. Treating the side effects with a second drug. Discontinue lithium and switching to a different drug if lithium side effects are intolerable or cannot be managed. Abnormal renal function tests are managed in collaboration with a nephrologist to determine the need for further testing, a reduction in the dose of lithium or switching to an alternative medication for treating bipolar disorder. Polyuria refers to excessive urinating and polydipsia refers to excessive thirst or excessive drinking water. Polyuria and polydipsia have been observed in up to 70% of lithium-treated patients. 
administering lithium once per day, maintaining lithium serum concentration as low as possible, avoiding episodes of lithium toxicity are some of the measures that can be implemented to minimize polyuria and polydipsia. Diuretics such as potassium sparing diuretics, uh, amyloride, may decrease polyuria but caution must be used because many diuretics alter serum lithium concentrations. Lithium doses may need to be adjusted and lithium levels checked more often. It is estimated that 25% of patients treated with lithium develop tremors. Watchful waiting is a reasonable approach to lithium tremor because it often is relatively mild and resolves over time. Management of lithium tremor that is troublesome or persistent starts with modifying aggravating factors such as decreasing caffeine intake. In addition, it may help to change the lithium preparation from long acting to short acting or to a different salt such as from carbonate to citrate or to divide the daily dose to take small amounts more often. For lithium tremor that still persists and causes moderate to severe functional problems, consider adding a better blocker such as propranolol. Alternatively, the total daily dose of lithium can be reduced if feasible. Nausea secondary to lithium is observed in 10 to 20% of patients. Management strategies include the following, mentioned from most to least preferable. Taking lithium with food or after meals, using a sustained release formulation of lithium to decrease peak serum concentrations because nausea may be related to higher peak levels, dividing the daily dose to take smaller amounts more often to decrease peak serum concentrations, taking with a second drug and reducing the total daily dose. It is estimated that 10% of patients treated with lithium develop diarrhea. Diarrhea is often but not always caused as a result of higher serum lithium concentrations. Some suggested measure to minimize diarrhea includes using immediate release formulation of lithium, using antidiarrheal agent and reducing the daily lithium dose. Lithium can cause weight gain, encourage patients to drink low caloric drinks when thirsty, make dietary changes, exercise, and if these measures fail, consider adding a drug to manage weight. As always, thank you for watching and if you find this video beneficial, please like, share and subscribe.